welcome to my unboxing and review of the ASUS GeForce GTX 760 Mars. Now it might seem like a regular GTX 760, except that that one comes in a package that looks a little something like this. So no, this is something special. With the Mars branding on there, we know we're getting something ROG and something a little bit different. So inside the box, Packed in nice, soft, closed cell foam, we get the GTX 760 Mars, which has a gorgeous DirectCU2 style cooler on it with ROG color scheming and branding all over it. And under that, we get not one, but two GeForce GTX 760 cores, each of them equipped with two gigs of memory, clocked at six gigahertz, each of them clocked at a base of 1006 megahertz and a boost of 1072. Although guys, we do of course overclock the card for our performance evaluation later and having a total altogether of 2000 304 CUDA cores. It also has a much better power implementation with a 12 phase super alloy power Digi Plus VRM system as well as just an overall better built high quality non-reference board. So for example, they're using their black metallic caps which are rated at 10,000 hours of lifetime at 105 degrees Celsius. It also has a full backplate unlike the reference GTX 690 which does a couple of things so you might be able to argue that it helps with heat dissipation a little bit, but eh. um, but what it also does is it actually protects the components on the back and gives more rigidity to the card so that it's less likely to flex. Speaking of rigidity to the card, it has almost none because on the back of the card it has a backplate and on the front of the card it has almost a full unisync that actually does contribute to cooling because it is being actively cooled by the two fans that are blowing air towards it. On the top of the card we find a single SLI finger. This means that the card is compatible with quad SLI if you're running an additional ASUS GTX 760 Mars, and we find the illuminated logo, so there's a beautiful Mars logo that lights up when the card is installed in your case and powered. Speaking of power, we've got two PCI Express 8-pin connectors. If your power supply doesn't have two 8-pins, don't worry, they do include a dual 6-pin to 8-pin adapter, although if your card doesn't have dual 8-pins, you might not necessarily want to be running a card like this because power consumption is high. It actually consumes more power than a GTX 780T. And as you guys will see in our performance testing, the performance is pretty similar. These two fans here are their dust proof design fans, so this offers extended longevity, and so they'll basically just last longer without sounding terrible. And the full top shroud is finished in a gorgeous soft touch feel with aluminum anodized red accents that just, I mean, guys, let's face it, this card won't perform that differently from two GTX 760 DirectCU2s. But what it does do is it adds the bling bling. So let's get into performance numbers. What do we compare something like this against? Well, ASUS's own numbers reference Titan a lot, but I don't think that makes a lot of sense because Titan is significantly more expensive and has been usurped by the GTX 780 Ti, which is cheaper and better performing than Titan when it comes to gaming applications. So we ran our own tests and we included the R9 290 as sort of our value high performance option, as well as Nvidia's own GTX 780 and 780 Ti to give us a pretty clear picture of how it stacks up. Now, because it's priced pretty similar to a 780 Ti, it shouldn't surprise you guys that in our test suite, which hopefully we're going to have up on the screen right now, it performs very similarly to a GeForce GTX 780 Ti. With that said, there are some caveats. So number one is the fact that power consumption is going to be higher than an individual card. Number two is the fact that you're going to have some behaviors that are not as desirable as you might get from an individual higher end card. SLI doesn't scale perfectly. So so there will be situations where this card will perform extremely well and there will be other ones where it just doesn't perform that well or where to get stability you will even have to disable a GPU and you are effectively reducing the performance that you can get out of it. I do generally recommend that you run a single more powerful card rather than running SLI until you're at the point where you're already buying the most powerful single GPU available, at which point if you really need more performance, you can add another one. The other issue with SLI is that even though this card has four gigs of memory on it, only two gigs can be used effectively because you have to duplicate the data that's stored in the frame buffer that is allocated to each GPU, whereas GeForce GTX 780 Ti has three gigs of memory, all of which is usable. 
And all of that even ignores the fact that, like we said before, you could buy two GTX 760s, which would be less expensive to get about the same performance and present a much more compelling value option than something like a 760 Mars. So who is the Mars made for? And the answer is the same person that every other Mars and every other Aries series ROG card from ASUS is made for. Someone who values the form of the card, someone who values the prestige of owning one of their top tier ROG class cards. I mean, the engineering that goes into building these cards is very, very admirable and they look the part. So I think that pretty much wraps things up. Thank you for checking out our unboxing and review of the GeForce GTX 760 Mars from ASUS. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment if you want to let us know what you thought. I mean, what would you buy out of these three options? 780 Ti, Mars 760, or just two sort of less expensive 760s and compromise those additional two PCI Express slots because this at least fits in the form factor of one card. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.